I recently had Tony Robbins on my main channel for the third time in an interview. And so to celebrate that, please enjoy this special video from our vault. Fulfillment is an art. What's gonna fulfill you is different than the other person next to you. You're not gonna learn that from anybody else. And you gotta find it, because success without fulfillment is the ultimate failure. And I get those phone calls all the time for the multi-billionaire entrepreneur or politician or business person or the person just won their Academy Award and they're depressed and they can't tell anybody. Because they got all their goals but they're not fulfilled because they really don't have that sense of meaning in their life. They went for something and they got it, they achieved. And if you doubt this, what I'm saying is relevant to you or us or anyone, just think about it. about a year, what, a month ago, we lost um, what I consider to be a national treasure, Robin Williams. How many of you loved Robin Williams? Look around the room, keep your hands up, look. And most of you didn't know him. Almost every, and where you go in the world, people love Robin Williams. By the way, was he great at achievement? Oh my God, that guy, he said he wanted to make, become a great comedian, he did that. I want to make the world laugh, he did I want to make my own TV show, he did I want to have the number one TV show, he did it. I want to make movies, he did it. I want an Academy Award for not being funny. Not his skill set, drama, and he did it. I want a beautiful family, and he did it. And then he hung himself. Make everybody happy but yourself. Not a good plan. So if I had a gift to give you, it would be maybe make a different decision. And the decision is, that no matter what happens in your life, you're gonna live in a beautiful state. A beautiful state. And that could be happy, that could be grateful, that could be being generous. Those are all beautiful states, aren't they? It could be curious, it could be fun, it could be playful. You're not limited to one state, but it's different than suffering. And most people's suffering, and all suffering I've ever seen, I've traveled 100 countries, I've dealt with presidents of countries and you know, presidents of businesses, CEOs, I've dealt with people in prison, I've dealt with, you name it, average people. Suffering always comes because you're obsessed about something related to you. You can only be depressed if you're focusing on yourself. You say, no, I'm depressed because it's my kids and, the, and they're not doing well. No, you're depressed because you feel you failed your kids. It's about you. It's about how you think, you, what you should have done or shouldn't have done or what someone did to you or didn't do to you in the past or the future, which don't even exist. So I have a simple goal. My goal is help people make a decision that says, I don't know what's gonna happen. You might get a divorce, even though you don't think so. You might find a family of your family with cancer. You might have your house get burned down or have a tornado go by, and if you live in the same place, it happens every two years and you move back, we should talk, but <laughs> you know, some people seem to do that for some reason. You can't control those things. I can't control those things. I don't want those to happen to you or anybody I love or anybody who's even a stranger to me, but they're going to happen. True? Not positive thinking bullshit, just the truth. So if that's gonna happen, I say make a decision now that says, I'm gonna live in a beautiful state and I'm gonna find beauty in whatever life brings me because life is too short not to. I love this clip and I agree that fulfillment and success look different for everybody and figuring out what that looks like for you, what that really means to you, that's the ultimate game. And that comes from just living life, that comes from thinking about it, self-reflection, understanding what you love out of your life and what you don't like anymore and need to eliminate. And it can also come from exposing yourself to new ideas, to new people, to new mentors, to help shift your thinking so that you can break free of your immediate environment and learn more from people who've gone on and done amazing things. It's why I've started the Top 10 Rules of Success series. It's iconic on this channel and it really means a lot to me because my goal here is to profile all sorts of different people from all sorts of different walks of life and when Tony Robbins is talking about success, it's through his lens. And if Donald Trump is talking about success, it's through his lens. And if the Dalai Lama is talking about success, it's through his lens. And Oprah Winfrey is through her lens. And Priyanka Chopra is through her lens. And so my goal here is to not say, this is the only thing that success means, but to be able to give you a wide perspective because what the Dalai Lama says is gonna be really different than what Donald Trump says. But you can still potentially learn a little bit from both because the ultimate goal is for you to figure out what success and what fulfillment looks like for you. When I first started, it was only about entrepreneurs. Every video was only about entrepreneurs. And the first top 10 that we shifted from that, I think was Michael Jordan, because he is a successful entrepreneur, he's a billionaire. But people associate him with basketball and sport. And when we looked at his collection of advice, we're not gonna make a video on how to dunk like Michael Jordan, 
but a lot of the wisdom that he shares is still applicable whether you're an entrepreneur or not. And when I realized that, it's like these perspectives matter. And I don't just want to show one side. I don't just want to show what financial success looks like. And so the game is for you to figure out what success looks like for you. Because when Tony Robbins says it, or the Dalai Lama, or Donald Trump, or Priyanka Chopra, they're speaking their truth. It's what it means to them. And that may be your truth, but it may not be. And so my hope is that when you watch one of these videos, you try on the hat. You try it on and see if it fits. See if you like it. See if it looks good in the mirror. You try it on. And if you don't like it, you ditch it. If you're watching a top 10 rules video and only two of the points speak to you, you ditch the other eight. Don't worry about the other eight. Those two things could be life changing for you. Keep that hat on and disregard the rest. The ultimate game in life for you is to figure out what happiness, what fulfillment, what success looks like for you. So the question of the day today is, I'm curious, how would you define fulfillment for yourself? What does that look like? Be as detailed or as brief as you'd like. I would love to hear your comments. Leave it down below. I also want to give a quick shout out to Jose Velez. Jose, thank you so much for picking up a copy of my book, Your One Word, and doing the review and posting it on Instagram with that awesome picture. I really, really appreciate the support, man, and I'm so glad that you enjoyed the book. So thank you guys again for watching. I believe in you. I hope you continue to believe in yourself and whatever your one word is. Much love, and I'll see you again tomorrow morning for another shot of Espresso. I wake up every morning. Espresso, keep me going. I've never really been interested in living a balanced life. You know, I don't. I think uh, balanced people don't change the world. First of all. I think balanced people don't really follow a dream, you know? This doesn't mean that you don't have responsibilities. Like, just go to the other part of his question, how can you have a family? Well, sure, you can have a family and have, you know, but balance is kind of like, I feel like um, balance is like a made up word. It's like invented by corporations, you know, to make their employees think that they're happy. You know, it's like you got this balance, like you could work at Microsoft, you know, or something mm -hmm. here in Seattle. And uh, There's like 10 Microsoft people in the audience. That's right. No disrespect sure. to Microsoft. Let's pick another company. <laughs> Microsoft's a great company. One out of every five people that's in right. Seattle works at Microsoft. That's right. You know, and it's like, you know, you got, you got this thing and, and maybe you love your job. And if you love your job, that's great. But I, I hear from a lot of dissatisfied people at some of these big companies and they write in, they're like, I'm reading your blog from my cubicle and like, you know, I have this good job and I've got my health insurance. I've got free yoga every Thursday. Um, but I'm not really, you know, fulfilled. Right, I'm not really fulfilled. So for me, I guess I'm much more interested in that word fulfilled. Like, you know, how can you live a fulfilled life? And um, you can live a fulfilled life and still pay your bills. You know, lots of creative people do it. Lots of unconventional people do it. And uh, it's, I would say, if anything, it's actually much more common now than it used to be. You know, when I first um, started working online, you know, 15 years ago, I didn't know a lot of other people who were doing that. You know, my friends thought I was selling drugs or something. Well, you like, were. Right? Well, I was, you know, but, uh, <laughs> or like online gambling or, you know, whatever. Like parents have no idea how the internet works and stuff, but now it's, uh, it's much more common. So I, I don't really like the word balance myself. So what we'd like to do is we want to replace the word, like living a balanced life is not the goal. Mm -hmm. The goal is living a fulfilled life. Mm -hmm. As you try to figure out the impossible task of juggling work and family, and you hear over and over and over again that you just need a lot of help, we just need to be organized, we just need to try a little bit harder. As a very successful woman, a single mother of three, who constantly gets asked the question, how do you do it all? For once, I'm going to answer that question with 100% honesty here for you now. Because it's just us, because it's our fireside chat, because somebody has to tell you the truth. Shonda, how do you do it all? The answer is this, I don't. Whenever you see me somewhere succeeding in one area of my life, that almost certainly means I am failing in another area of my life. If I am killing it on a scandal script for work, I am probably missing bath and story time at home. If I'm at home sewing my kids' Halloween costumes, I'm probably blowing off a rewrite I was supposed to turn in. If I'm accepting a prestigious award, I'm missing my baby's first swim lesson. If I'm at my daughter's debut in her school musical, I am missing Sandra O's oh last scene ever being filmed at Grey's Anatomy. If I am succeeding at one, I am inevitably failing at the other. That is the trade-off. That is the Faustian bargain one makes with the devil that comes with being a powerful working woman who is also a powerful mother. You never feel 100% okay. You never get your sea legs. You're always a little nauseous. Something is always lost. Something is always missing. And yet, 
I want my daughters to see me and know me as a woman who works. I want that example set for them. I like how proud they are when they come to my offices and know that they come to Shonda land. There is a land and it is named after their mother. In their world, mothers run companies. In their world, mothers own Thursday nights. In their world, mothers work. And I am a better mother for it. The woman I am because I get to run Shondaland, because I get to write all day, because I get to spend my days making things up, that woman is a better person and a better mother because that woman is happy. That woman is fulfilled. That woman is whole. I wouldn't want them to know the me who didn't get to do this all day long. I didn't, wouldn't want them to get to know the me who wasn't doing. So lesson number three is that anyone who tells you they're doing it all perfectly is a liar. How would you describe fulfillment as a YouTube producer? Well, I, you know, I think fulfillment, it, fulfillment, is, fulfillment and YouTube producer are kind of two different things. I think fulfillment in general as a filmmaker, for me, comes from creating. And that's why, you know, in, in 2010, they put the soundtrack on for this story, so I'll try to make it sound nostalgic. Um, <laughs> I left like the mainstream, the mainstream sort of universe because I wanted to create more. So for me, fulfillment comes in creation. And I always say that like, I'm a little bit of a junkie and my drug is uploading. Because if I haven't posted a movie in like a month or a month and a half, I get like seriously depressed. And the only thing that like makes me happy is to get a new movie out there. Um, that answers your question, right? If you want to see my recent interview with Tony Robbins, check the video right there next to me. I think you'll love it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. There is a regenerative revolution that's happening in medicine right now, in precision medicine. Billionaires know about it, but the average person doesn't. What pushed me over the edge recently is I had some experiences that really hit me hard.